Hello, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for all the fun noises I've got going on in my room right now with coffee maker and heater, so bear with me. Uh, all right, so let's go through this quiz. Uh, it says here, write an equation of a line with a slope of negative 5 ninths and a y-intercept of negative 3. Uh, let's just cut right to it. We have this, this uh, version of the equation of a line where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So it's as easy as that. I gave you that information, so you just plug it in. Negative 5 ninths x minus 3. There we go, there's the first one. All right. So it says write the equation of the line. Well, I, what equation, like what version should I use? Uh, I'll go ahead and prefer this one most of the time. Uh, so let's just go ahead and go with that. For the point slope form, I could also use it here and in most situations. But for this one, y equals mx plus b. I need the slope, I need the y-intercept. All right. Um, well, actually, I can see the y-intercept. There it is right there. So I know the y-intercept is 4. And all I need now is to find the slope. Well, if I just start here and go down 3, that's a negative 3. So that's the rise is negative 3. And the run is positive 4. So there's my slope. So I have everything I need. y equals negative 3 fourths times x plus b, which is 4. We're done. Okay, a tomato plant in Jeremy Blevins' garden is 11 centimeters tall when it starts. Uh, it has grown 7 centimeters per day. Run an equation that uh, expresses the height h in terms of the number of days uh, since it was planted. So basically it's saying given d, I should be able to calculate h. Given the number of days since it was planted, I should be able to find uh, the height. Remember I said that uh, we even have like a, an intuitive understanding of uh, how to figure out how tall this plant is, right? Let's just say it's been five days. How would we calculate how tall it's been? Well, it says it was 11 centimeters when it started, right? Then I'm gonna add its growth after five days. It grows at 0.7 centimeters per day, so I just do 0.7 times five. I've watched many of you do this absolutely fine. If, when it comes to writing the equation, that's where you have a tough time. So 0.7 times 5 is 0.35. Right, this should have been a plus. Plus 0.35. Uh, or no, 3.5. 3.5. So that's 14.5. OK. Well, I'll we'll just write that right there. As I recommended, like I said, just put in specific numbers. You'll see the, the formula being used, the, the function being used, uh, and then you can replace those changing parts with x and y. Uh, what if it had been 10 days? 11 plus 0.7 times 10. Right? We know that's what we should do. We should take the, the growth per day times the number of days and add the beginning height. Right? So like our starting point. And then 0.7 is our rate of change, a.k.a. the slope. Right. Here's the thing that varies. This, this is the same. 11 is the same. 0.7 is the same for both. Here's the thing that varies. That's the, my, my variable. That's what? The number of days. So 11 plus 0.7 times any number of days you pick will give you the height for that number of days. There you go, there, there's your equation. I didn't even finish here. It's 11 plus 7, so that'd be 17, right? And that's the output, that's the height. Okay, remember, starting point and rate of change. Y-intercept and slope, same thing. All right, so very similar thing. Lucy pays $211 in advance, so she just goes in, she plops down $211 uh, before she does anything, before she works out or plays basketball or anything like that. Um, as the athletic club, she uh, each time she uses the club, five dollars is deducted from her account. Okay, so she goes once, she spends five dollars from that two hundred and eleven dollars. She goes twice, she spends ten. If she goes three times, she's 
she's going to lose $15 out of that 211 advanced payment. Um, so uh, just like this, write a function that represents how much money she has left in the account after uh, x visits, and then figure out how much she has left after 10 visits. Well, as I just already kind of went through, if she's there for one visit, that's minus five dollars. That's how much she'll have after one visit. That'll be two hundred and six dollars. Uh, or she starts with two eleven. If she goes the six times, she will lose thirty dollars out of that account, right? So that's going to be two eleven minus thirty. Eighty-one dollars. Uh, two eleven. What about four? Well, ten visits. That's one specific we're supposed to find. Well, I would naturally take ten times five dollars away from two hundred eleven dollars. Okay, one sixty one. Oh, that should be one eighty one. Excuse me. Um. So we have done this calculation several times. It, clearly, every time I want to find her total amount left. I can find that by taking 211 and subtracting 5 times however many visits she has used up. And after 10 visits, she has $161 left. And those are the two things I was asking. I'm going to find the y-intercept of the line that passes through 3, negative 5 and has a slope of 4 ninths. Well, remember we have this slope-intercept form. If I knew what that was, I would know the slope. Don't care about that. I just want to know the y-intercept. Okay. Oh, I know the slope already. Well, let's see. Let's start writing this down. I got the slope. Uh, slope times x plus b, right? That's I almost got this. Uh, equation written out. But all I really care about is the y-intercept. How will I find the y-intercept? Uh, keep in mind, this is a function. A function is uh, an input-output machine. You put something in, you get something out. Look at there. It's an example of exactly what happens when I put in 3. I get out negative 5. So 4 ninths times 3 plus whatever b is winds up being negative 5. So just go ahead and solve for b. Negative 5 equals Cancel out, we got 4 thirds there, plus b, we'll subtract 4 thirds from both sides. Negative 5 minus 4 thirds, we need a common denominator, so that's negative 15 thirds. So negative 15 thirds minus 4 thirds is negative 19 thirds, that's what this y-intercept is. That just comes from remembering that in y equals mx plus b, this is my slope. I know my slope, I know an x, I know a y, and I can use all that information to solve for b because that's what b is, it's the y-intercept. All right, next question. An equation in slope-intercept form, that means y equals mx plus b form. Uh, the line that passes through this point and this point. All right. Uh, so you might think, oh, I just like the last problem. I have an x and a y. How about I do that? Negative 3 for y and 4 for x. But I don't know what m is. And I don't know what b is. OK. Uh, if I knew m, that'd be great. If I knew b, that'd be great. I could solve for m. I don't, I don't know either of those things. But I could find the slope by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 12, minus negative 3 over negative 6 minus 4. That's 12 plus 3, that's 15, over negative 10. That simplifies to negative 3 halves. That's what it should be. So the slope is negative 3 halves. And I can use that slope and this x and y to solve for b, just like we did in the previous problem. Negative 3 equals the slope of negative 3 halves times 4 plus b. Let me simplify here. We got 2, so we got negative 3 equals negative 6 plus b b equals 3. The equation would be y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. OK, so now it wants it in point-slope form. That's just this other form, y minus y1 equals m 
times x minus x1. m is the slope, just like m is the slope in the, in the slope-intercept form. Uh, this y and this x make up a point, right? There's a point, any point on the line will do, right? The x from that point is x1, the y from that point is y1. And this y and this x, so your variables y and x. Uh, well, this is great. This is the exact right kind of information I would want to write something in point-slope form. And once I fill this in, I'll be done because it's, that is point-slope form. There's no need to convert it to something else. It's in point-slope form. We have y minus y1 equals m times x minus negative 2. So the final version is y minus 5 equals 1 third times x plus 2. That's slope-intercept form or sorry, point-slope form. If I want to write it in slope-intercept form, I could go about it several different ways, but I could just take this equation and get y by itself, because slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So I can distribute the 1 third. Now I have y minus 5 equals 1 third x plus 2 thirds. Add 5 to both sides. Add 5 to this guy here. y equals 1 third x 2 thirds plus 15 thirds is 17 thirds. So y equals 1 third x plus 17 thirds. Equation of the line passing through 4, 8, and parallel to this line. Okay. So let me just scratch this out right now so that you realize that this is a useless piece of information. Okay, because what are they telling us? Here's the equation of some line. And that line is parallel to a line that we're interested in, a line that goes through 4, 8. Okay, and our experience back here with, with slope and uh, a point tells us that if I knew the slope of this line, the slope along with the point is enough information to write the equation of the line. Um, so if I, if I could figure out what the slope was, then I would be in business. Well, if they're parallel, we have established that they must have the same slope. The slope of this is 3 fourths, so the slope of our line must be 3 fourths. Now we have everything we need. Right? We know the slope is 3 fourths. Okay, 3 fourths x, well x is 4 in this case, plus b equals 8. Right? y equals m times x plus b. So now I solve for b. 8 equals 3 plus b, b equals 5, y equals 3 fourths x plus 5. Okay, which of these are parallel to each other? Parallel means same slope. That is the only thing that tells me that they have the same slope, or that they're parallel. That's the definition of being parallel, I have the same slope. What's the slope of this line? Mm, several different ways to figure it out, but I think the fastest way would be write it in slope-intercept form. Uh, y equals mx plus b, right? So we get y by itself. So we have negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 7. I just subtracted 3x from both sides. Divide both sides by negative 5. y equals negative 3 divided by negative 5 is positive 3 fifths times x minus 7 fifths. So this has a slope of 3 fifths. So if I could find another line that has a slope of 3 fifths, it'd have to be parallel. All right, so this one, I'll add 3x to both sides. 5y equals 3x minus 7. Divide by 5 on both sides. y equals 3 divided by 5, 3 fifths x, uh, minus 7 fifths. OK, so these have the same slope. Uh, so we could say that uh, like line A and line B have the same slope. And so they're parallel. Uh, I guess our answer would be A and B or the equations of these lines. Now, truth be told, uh, no. sometimes you write a question and, and uh, you, you don't write it quite well enough. Uh, I was just looking for people to find the slopes of, of, find two equations that have the same slope, two lines that have the same slope. Um, now, if you, if you look here, they do have the same slope, but they also have the same y-intercept. So actually, they're not parallel, OK? What I was looking for was for you to find the same slope. They're the exact same line. If I were to graph uh, one line, it would look something like this. Like That would be like line A, and line B would just be right on top of it. They have the same slope, but they also go through the same y-intercept, so they're the exact same line. But 
if you said A and B with that reasoning. Sorry for the interruption. Got a little Mr. Combo visit. Um, so if you found that these had the same slope and said they're parallel, that's fine. I, I wasn't looking to trick you or anything. Uh, so, uh, but if you had noticed and you had said, oh, these are the same lines, so none of them are parallel, then that would have been great. Um, but we're just looking for two lines that have the same slope. And if these had, if I had been paying attention and realized, oh, you're going to get the same y-intercept when you do all that, uh, then we would have had a better question. But. Um, now, write an equation that has that goes through negative three four, and it's perpendicular to this line. So it's very similar to the problem we just did, except for instead of perpendicular, sorry, instead of parallel, these lines are perpendicular. Okay, and keep in mind this has nothing to do with them being parallel. That's just the y-intercept of that line. Whether or not they have the same y-intercept or what y-intercept this line has has nothing to do with what the y-intercept of this line is. But their slopes are very closely related. This slope is negative 5 over 1. I like to write it that way. Uh, so this slope must be positive 1 over 5. Right, so that is the slope of this line. So uh, we can use the slope intercept form. Uh, y is 4 equals the slope 1 fifth times x, that's negative 3, plus b, which we're trying to figure out. 4 equals negative 3 fifths plus b. We're going to add 3 fifths to both sides. Uh, so that's 4 over 1 plus 3 fifths. That's what b is going to turn out to be. We need a common denominator of 5, so this would be 20 over 5. So b is 23 over 5. So we have y equals 1 fifth x plus 23 over 5. Uh, let's see. Which is the equation of the line that is parallel to the line in the graph? Okay, they're parallel. It means they have the same slope. So any equation here would need to make a line that's parallel to this line, meaning it has the same slope. This has a slope of up 2 over 3, 2 thirds. Okay. Uh, this does not have a slope of 2 thirds, it has a slope of negative 2 thirds. This has a slope of 3 halves. This has a slope of 2 thirds, that's probably it. This does not have a slope of 2 thirds, this must be it. If, if it's one of these, it has to be this, because it's the only one with the same slope. Uh, if two of them had the same slope, maybe then we'd have to figure out, like, oh, well, what's the y-intercept? But multiple choice questions, such is the nature of multiple choice questions. We ruled out the rest of them, this must be it. Um, write an equation of a line that is perpendicular to this line. If they're perpendicular, they have opposite reciprocal slopes, something we've established. So I need to find out the slope of this line so that the slope of my line can be uh, the opposite reciprocal. To figure out the slope of this line, let's write it in slope-intercept form. Subtract 4x from both sides, divide by 6, that's negative 4 over 6 times x plus 12 divided by 6 is 2. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. I'm going to write an equation that is y equals positive 3 halves x. And it just says an equation. It doesn't give me a point that it has to go through. There's no way to figure out what b would have to be. So just say set it. doesn't matter. Any line that has an opposite reciprocal slope from this one is going to be perpendicular. Explain how you know that the graph of the equation is perpendicular to this guy right here. Uh, I know because uh, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. And that's it. All right, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.